Bristol Myers, the makers of Sal Hepatica for the smile of health and Vitalis for well-groomed hair, presents The Alan Young Show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ken Delmar speaking on behalf of those two old friends, Sal Hepatica and Vitalis. And welcoming you to the Alan Young Show, featuring our singing star, Diane Courtney, the music of Peter Van Steeden, and starring Alan Young. <laughs> it's Tuesday night and time for another visit to Alan Young's house. I like to call on Alan because he's always so full of information, so bubbling over with news. Yeah, let's stop in on him and see what's cooking. Yeah, hiya, Alan. What's new? I ain't talking, see? Uh, if I ever told you that I was going to elope with my girlfriend, Betty, you'd have it all over town. You're going to elope with Betty? Who told you? <laughs> Look, you've you got to keep this quiet, see, Kenny? Don't be a statue pigeon. You mean a stool pigeon, not statue pigeon. You don't know much about pigeons, do you? <laughs> well, Alan... Alan, I want to be the first to congratulate you. Yeah. Marriage is a wonderful thing. Now, for instance, take a little thing like this shirt I'm wearing. No buttons. If I spent $2 for a marriage license, that wouldn't happen. If you spent $2 for a shirt, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> See, Kenny, I, I know I'm a lot older than Betty is, and it's about time I, I settled down. Mm, well, I don't want to discourage you, Alan, but marriage is an expensive proposition. I know, but I'm not worried. I got money in the bank. How much? I don't know. I haven't shaken it lately. <laughs> Well, what kind of a woman is uh, Betty's mother? You know, the mother-in-law problem can be an awful headache. Kenny, that's the one thing that worries me. I think my future mother-in-law is the kindest, sweetest, dearest woman in the world. And when I'm married, I'd love to have her live with us. Then what's your problem? Am I normal? <laughs> oh, Kenny, I have wonderful plans. I'm going to build Betty a model kitchen. We'll have an automatic washing machine, an automatic ironer, an automatic heater, an automatic dishwasher. Where will you eat? At the automat. <laughs> I, I can see it all now. I come home after a long day at the laundry. At, uh... <laughs> I work the third mangle now. <laughs> I come home now and B B Betty's waiting for me, you see. I can see us sitting by a roaring fireplace. Betty is knitting. I'm smoking. I'm sitting too near the fireplace. <laughs> We'll have children. Ten, twelve, fourteen. Fourteen children? Yeah, we're going to accentuate the posterity. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to see that my children have steaks and butter and cigarettes. I, I want them to have all the things that I didn't have. <laughs> and I, I can see the day my daughters go out and get married one by one. And they'll come back home two by two. <laughs> Well, I suppose you'll elope by putting a ladder up to Betty's window. Oh, uh, I don't know. I tried it once, but her father caught me as I was going up the ladder. What did you do? What could I do? I painted the side of the house. <laughs> well, Alan, I, I wish you all the luck in the world. I feel kind of proud that I'm the only one who knows about this elopement. You're the, the only one I've told, Kim. Yeah. How does Betty feel about this? I haven't told her either. <laughs> you haven't told Betty yet? Alan, don't be silly. You have to tell Betty that you're going to elope with her. Suppose she doesn't want to go. Then I'll go myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm not worried, though. Betty is crazy about me. She likes an older man, you know. Uh, Kenny, you'll have to excuse me. I have to run next door and see about borrowing a ladder for my neighbor, Mr. Grimes. See you later, Kenny. Yeah. <sighs> Hope Mr. Grimes is home. Yeah, he's home all right. His winter underwear is on the line. And the back door is open. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Grimes, are you inside? Ah, well, I guess I'll try the house. Hello there. Oh, hello, Mr. Grimes. I came over to borrow a ladder. I was judge at a bathing beauty contest once. Yeah, well, what's that got to do with... Girls, girls had strips of ribbon across the... 
bathing suits with their names on. Head to on account of the pure food law. The pure food law? Yeah. You gotta put a label on every tomato. <laughs> yeah, well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Grimes, I came over to borrow a ladder. A ladder? What for, son? You want to be taller than she is? I want to be loafed and get married. Oh, I had a very unhappy married life. Huh? Yeah, my wife wanted ten kids and I wanted fifteen. Well, why were you unhappy? Twenty-five kids is too much for anybody. <laughs> Look, getting back to the lab. She, uh, she was a smart woman, my wife. Huh? Yeah, during the rubber shortage... She converted an old rubber tire into a girdle. Oh, how did it work out? Looked better on the truck. <laughs> yeah. Well, about this ladder... I, I, I still remember the day I proposed to her. Yeah, I was mighty nervous. I got hot, and then I got cold, and then I got hot, and then I got cold. Where did you propose? Between the gas range and the refrigerator. <laughs> but my uncle, he had more luck at marriage than I did. He's married 40 years and still making love. Well, your aunt is very lucky. Yeah, so is my uncle. Because if my aunt ever finds out, she'll break his head. <laughs> yeah, well, look, I came over to borrow a ladder from you. Can't let you have it, son. Hmm? No, there's blonde living next door, and I have to wash her windows. She can't see through them. Well, why should that bother you? I can't see through them either. <laughs> well, I'll get a ladder somewhere else. So long, there. So long, there. Say, Alan, I, I was worried. I, I thought I'd run over and see if you got your ladder yet. No, I didn't. Kenny. Well, I just remembered you can use the ladder I have in my drugstore. Gee, Kenny, thanks. You're a true friend. Well, you're a true friend to me, too, Alan. I'll never forget the time we were ice skating on the lake. The ice broke and I fell in, and you, without a moment's hesitation, jumped in and rescued me. What a friend. Well, why shouldn't I jump in after you? You had my skates on. <laughs> just the same, Kenny, you are a good friend to me and to thousands of people, too. I am? says Kenny, coyly, knowing very well what he means. You are, says Alan firmly, knowing very well that Kenny knows exactly what I mean. You're a good friend to thousands of people because you put them wise to Sal Hepatica. Well, it's really Sal Hepatica who's the friend when uh, you're in the need of a laxative. Particularly on those mornings when you wake up feeling sick and headachy due to the need of a laxative, you simply take a glass full of sparkling Sal Hepatica and soon you'll be feeling better. For Sal Hepatica taken then brings quick, gentle relief, usually within an hour. That means you don't have to risk feeling miserable all day, waiting until night to take a laxative. You take Sal Hepatica the minute you need it. And besides quick, gentle relief, Sal Hepatica gives you an additional advantage. This famous saline helps sweeten an upset stomach by helping to reduce excess gastric acidity. So tonight or tomorrow, get a bottle of Sal Hepatica from your druggist, remembering this caution use only as directed. Then whenever you need a laxative, morning, noon, or night, see how much faster you feel better. Thanks to gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. And now here is Peter Van Steeden and his orchestra to the play Star Eyes. <laughs> Best place to get a marriage license. The city hall. Let's see what this sign says. Marriage license, two dollars. Dog license, five dollars. Well, I'll have to get married. I can't afford a dog. 
see. There's two doors here. I'll just try this one. Oh, now you stop. <laughs> oh, Mr. Smith, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Important conference. <laughs> this must be the right door here. Oh, yeah, there's the man over there. How do you do? I'm Alan Young, and I want to get married. Oh, you mad, impetuous boy, you. <laughs> Have you been married before? No, this is my first trip to the altar. Well, is this trip necessary? <laughs> now, uh, this girl of yours, is she a cute little redhead with a turned-up nose and a habit of snuggling up close when she kisses you? No, why do you ask? I was just checking up on my girl. <laughs> uh, now, young man, the laws of this state require that you submit to a blood test. Yeah, just give a pint of blood to the Red Cross. I see, then you're fresh out of it. <laughs> Now, uh, for the wedding, who is going to be the fiancé and who is going to be the fiancé? Well, I sort of counted on just the two of us being there. <laughs> no, no, I'll explain it. The fiancé is the husband and the fiancé is the... You see, the wife always has the say. <laughs> now, uh, come, come, what is the name of the girl that... What is the name of the girl you intend to marry? Well, it's... It, it's a secret. Just leave it blank. Leave it blank? Hmm. How is that going to sound? Do you, Alan Young, take this blank to be your blankety blank? Well, I'm sorry, but I can't tell you. Just leave enough room to write Betty Cooper. You're marrying Betty Cooper. Who told you? The, uh, the big three. Oh. Yes, but don't worry. I'll keep it a secret. Uh, just fill out this form in triplicate and return it. Triplicate? What do you want five copies for? <laughs> Oh, no, it's three copies. Oh. One copy goes to Washington, one to Albany, and one to Drew Pearson. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll, I'll sign it. You might. My fountain pen seems a little stuck. Oh, well, here, use mine. It's okay, I'll just give mine a quick shake. <laughs> <laughs> you look nice in blue. Look, will you please sign this and get out of here? Okay, there. So long. Ah, what's that? I'll just poke my head out of the door to make sure nobody sees me. Mm -hmm. Peek a boo, Mr. Young. Oops. Oh, well, it's little David Dittenpepper. You bet you. Oh, you just bet. What, what are you doing up there in this city hall, David? Oh, I had to see the police commissioner about something. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, I was playing marbles with another kid, and some character comes up and wants me to throw the game. <laughs> oh, oh. Say, what were you doing in the marriage license office? Thinking of getting married? Um, uh huh. Well, I hope you're not rushing into this thing, Mr. Young. Oh, no, I've, I've thought the whole thing out very carefully. I've considered the girl from every angle. <laughs> well, don't overlook any of the curves either. <laughs> Oh, bless your little. Now, David. David, how do you know so much about women? You're talking to the Tommy Manville of 3B. <laughs> then you, you kissed a girl? You got $2. Would you like to try for four? Confidential, what does it feel like to kiss a girl? Well, it's not unlike eating a bowl of mush. Now, David, you're getting the wrong attitude about women. Oh, no. Some of them are okay. Mm -hmm. When my father was sick, my mother sat up all night with him. She never took her eyes off him for a second. Didn't your father have a nurse? Sure. That's why my mother never took her eyes off him. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you. So long, Casanova. So long, David boy. <laughs> But everything now that a man needs to get married. A license and a ladder. I forgot one important thing. I can't elope without a wedding cake. I'll try Crotchmeyer's bakery shop next door. Maybe they got something nice. Mm -mm. That's Sophie Crotchmeyer behind the counter. She's the biggest blabbermouth in town. I better be diplomatic about this. Uh, may I be of service to you? I... I'd like five cents worth of lady fingers. Oh, you mad, impetuous boy, you. 
Yeah, well, on second thought, that, that, that whole wheat bread looks pretty good. That's white bread. I forgot to dust it this morning. <laughs> Uh, uh, anything else? Well, I'll take a half a dozen donuts, sir. Well, uh, those donuts are 35 cents a dozen, and these over here are 20 cents a dozen. But what's the difference? The 20-cent ones are retread. <laughs> Maybe I don't want donuts after all. Well, look, why don't you try a loaf of our super-enriched bread? Each loaf of bread contains nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and straight <laughs> Well, do you have a loaf of bread that contains a small quantity of bread? Do you want this place to get raided? Uh, we also bake a super-enriched super bread. This loaf is really loaded. One slice will give you enough energy to walk 20 miles, climb 30 miles, or run 40 miles. What happens if I eat two slices? Jet propulsion. <laughs> Maybe I don't want anything. On second thought, I'll just have a a 14-layer wedding cake and on top of it write from Alan Young to Betty Cooper. Well, uh, do you mind if the cake is a little squashed? Why should the cake be squashed? It happens every time we put it in the typewriter. <laughs> and, and besides that, you know, the man who bakes our 14-layer cakes left for another job. What's he do now? He piles records on jukeboxes. Oh. Well, I uh, wish you a lot of luck, but uh, if your girl should run out on you, <laughs> I'm uh, sure you could find some sweet, lovely girl who'd like to get married. Namely, guess who? Yeah, well, I'm... Uh... Uh, uh, I'm a one-man girl myself. Yes, well, I'd like somebody who looks, looks less like one man and more like a girl. <laughs> If my mother's listening, she knows what I mean. <laughs> well, goodbye, Miss Quatmire. Uh... Well, what use of having a wedding cake? They'd only eat it anyway. Oh, hello, Kenny. Why, hello, Alan. How's the elopement coming along? Oh, just the usual trouble. Just think, though, Kenny. Soon Betty and I'll be married. Yeah, I know, Alan. I got your wedding present. Why, Kenny, how nice, but you shouldn't have done it. Oh, well, it's something I know you couldn't get, but I'm sure you'll like it. Here, but don't drop it. It's a bottle. But, Kenny, I don't drink. Uh, you don't drink it. You put it on your hair. Oh, so that's why they say the liquor you get nowadays makes your hair stand on end. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Alan, this is not liquor. It's a bottle of Vitalis. Vitalis? Kenny, have you been drinking? No, no, I haven't. This is genuine bottle of Vitalis, the last bottle in my house. Gee, thanks. Well, I haven't seen a bottle of Vitalis in a long while. I know. Well, that's because all the Vitalis made is going to the armed forces. Use it sparingly and make it last. You bet I will, Kenny. Gosh, this is really a swell present. It certainly is if you're like so many men who got accustomed to Vitalis for keeping their hair well-groomed, only to discover that wartime shortages made it necessary for Bristol Myers to send it all to the armed forces. But... Bristol Myers hopes the time isn't far away when Vitalis can once again be supplied to civilians. Then once again you'll be able to enjoy the famous Vitalis 60-second workout that loosens a tight, dry scalp, stimulates circulation, and helps prevent excessive falling hair. So friends, be patient. As soon as it's possible, you'll be able to get Vitalis again. And now, here is our glamorous singing star, Diane Courtney, to sing... I'm making believe. I'm making believe that you're in my arms, though I know you're so far away. Making believe I'm talking to you. Wish you could hear what I say. And here in the gloom of my lonely room, we're dancing like we used to do. Making believe is just another way of dreaming. So till my dreams come true, I'll whisper good night, turn off the light, and kiss my pillow. Making believe it's you. <laughs> So far away, making believe I'm talking to you. Wish 
you could hear what I say. We're dancing like we used to do. Making believe is just another way of dreaming. So tell my dreams come true. Whisper good night, turn off the light and kiss my pillow, making believe. Making believe it's you. I have the ladder. There's nothing left to do but call up Betty and tell her we're going to elope. She uh, just remembered my rival Hubert has a date at her house tonight. I don't know why she goes with those kids when I'm around. Well, what I'll do. I'll call him up and give the kid a good scare. That'll get rid of him. <clears throat> I'll use my deep voice. <clears throat> Hello? I would like to speak to that good-for-nothing weasel Hubert. Oh, Hubert, your mother's calling. <laughs> Hello, Mom. Did they take you off the night shift again? <laughs> this is not your mother. Hubert, your number has come up. Again? I thought I was a permanent 4 ref. <laughs> this is the Blue Beetle. The Blue Beetle? No. Yes. And in a few hours, you will meet the same fate as Shaky. <laughs> Look, Beetle, you wouldn't dare come after me tonight. The roads are covered with ice. Don't worry. The blue beetle stings on ice. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, boy, I bet I scared him good. He won't be at Betty's by the time I get there. I got the ladder set to Betty's window. Now I'll go in and tell her my plans. Oh, Mr. Young, what are you doing here? Don't you know I have a date tonight with Hubert? Oh, gee, I forgot this was Meatless Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up in, Alan, and lock that door. Huh? I just got my notice from the Blue Beetle. Not the Blue Beetle? Yeah, the Blue Beetle. Mm. I heard the most awful things about him. He's a monster. He's got the most horrible face in the world. <laughs> You'll meet him on equal terms. <laughs> I, I, I just can't stand it. I'm going to blow my brains out. Look, I'm going to blow my brains out. Hubert, put down that atomizer. <laughs> then why should I be the victim? I lived a good, clean life. I never tilted a pinball machine. I never whistled a girl. I never even kissed a girl. Why should he want to kill me? <laughs> Mr. Young, I think you're horrible to talk that way in front of Hubert. Look how pale he is. The green has left his cheek. Well, don't worry, Hubert. If you need any help, I'll be here. I don't need your help, Alan Young. I could take care of myself. I took a course from Charles Atlas. Well, what are you worried about? He forgot to send me the muscles. Uh, Betty, you need a man like me around. I'm older than you two. A man who shaves. Here, just feel my cheek. Well, I don't feel anything. Yeah? Well, run your hand down the other cheek. Hmm? I still don't feel anything. You must have passed it. <laughs> oh, well, that's, uh... <laughs> it's getting kind of late. I guess I'll be going, Betty. I'll, uh... <laughs> I'll see you later. Or later. <laughs> that is, if you'll allow me that much license. <laughs> later? Later license? Alan Young, what is all that double talk? Uh, well, in Australia, that means have a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Betty. Well, it's getting kind of late. Hubert, I hope you're not worried about that silly blue beetle thing. Oh, no, not at all, Betty. But, um, Betty, would you do me a favor? Well, what is it? Betty... 
Would you walk me home? <laughs> Hubert, if you're afraid to go home, you can stay here tonight. I'll double up with Mother and you can have my room. Ernest, your room? I have no pajamas for you. But if you look in the top drawer, you'll find a pink lace nightgown with rosebuds. <laughs> me and a pink lace nightgown with rosebuds? Gee, you'd think I was going on my honeymoon. <laughs> Good night, Hubert. Night, Betty. <laughs> As soon as the light goes out in Betty's room, I'll climb up the ladder and our elopement will begin. <laughs> Gee, this is romantic. Look, oh, the light just went out. Beat, beat my heart. For woman's love is frail. <gasps> Nick Kenny. <laughs> well, uh, here I am at the top of the ladder. Gee, I'm glad it's a dark night. I'll open the window. Here I go. Shh. Don't say a word. I'll throw this coat over you, darling, and carry you down. There. My. That that perfume you're wearing, it's it's my favorite odor. Minute rub. <laughs> I I just can't wait till we get down to the foot of the ladder so I can look into your beautiful face. Ah. Here we are, Betty. Now, I'm going to kiss you. Gee, I never expected this from a blue beetle. <laughs> Hubert! Alan, you... holy smoke, I kissed you. What are you complaining about? I almost married you. <laughs> Would you mind putting me down? The wind is blowing right through my nightgown. Well, no wonder. You've got a draft aft. <laughs> Oh, quiet. Here comes a policeman. Don't say a thing. I uh, hate to intrude this way, but I was just wondering, which one of you two is Juliet? <laughs> Officer, arrest this man. He tried to elope with me. And just how do you explain that, Romeo? <laughs> Cigarette? Look, I can explain everything, officer. I was going to elope with my girl, Betty, but somehow I got into the wrong room, so I eloped with him instead. Is that right, Juliet? <laughs> yes. Well, then it's very simple. What you two want is a divorce. <laughs> I don't want no divorce. I want a hot water bottle. Now, look, you two, make up your minds. I can't stand here all night arguing. I got a cigarette burning in my pocket. <laughs> No, the blue bull. <laughs> Mr. Young and Hubert, you come right into the house immediately. All right, Betty. So long, officer. Well, Hubert, do you feel better now? Yeah, this cup of hot milk sure hit the spot. I, I almost froze out there. It's nice you'd let me stay here the night, Betty. Well, it's much too late for you to go home. Sleep tight, boys. Night, Betty. Good night, Betty. Gee, Alan, I, I look so silly in this pink lace nightgown at Rosebud. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I don't look much better in a lavender nightgown with lace On behalf of Diane, Ken, Peter, myself, in fact, all of us, we want to thank you for being with us tonight. And don't forget the two products that make our Tuesdays together possible. Sal Hepatica for the smile of health and Vitalis for well-groomed hair. Sal Hepatica, Vitalis. Good night. <laughs> If your hands are giving you a lot of trouble these days, if they're rough and dry and chapped, listen carefully. I know I can help you. Get yourself a bottle of True Shave. It's a creamy, fragrant hand lotion that will really help keep your hands smooth and lovely. 
The fact is, touche is so unusual that you can put it on your hands before you put them in hot, soapy water. Truche provides beforehand protection that will actually help guard your hands even when they're in that hot, soapy water. Use Truche too, for rough elbows and knees, chapped legs as well as hands. Use Truche as a powder base. It's a perfect beauty lotion for loveliness all over. So why not begin today to use Truche? <laughs> This is the Blue Network. <laughs>